And welcome back, folks. It's I, Kamikaze, here to bring you some more of the Somnium Files. Where we left off was, uh, you know, me screaming into the microphone. And... Yeah, that's about it. Let's click our plot line. Um, Renju and Shogo's daughter, Mizuki. Iris' mother. Wait. Wait a moment. Did I mix up the uh, genetics here? Renju and Shoko's daughter, Mizuki. Mizuki has the strongest connections with all three victims. Oh, she's the one that's the daughter. I forgot. Because I'm the smirk. Shoko and Renju were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. Just ignore the bag. Haha. <laughs> Grab some sugar so that way I can make sure I function. She was good friends with Ota, too. But that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. She's too short to be in that bear costume. I honestly thought it was Ota because I was thinking that... He would act like he saves her and scares the bear away or something, then saves her, and then she falls in love with him. That's what I thought was going to happen. Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. Mayumi hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemnus Gate either. But her son? And since Renju is the president... Anyway... The weak point is Renju's ex-wife, Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her. And above all else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. But something's missing here. Renju and Shoko were connected to the Kumakuras. But there's no connection to Iris. Hitomi and Renju are definitely linked. They were high school classmates. And she did say that she met Shoko twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. No matter what the circumstances were, it seems impossible to me. I think I realize I keep blowing out my microphone. Because I keep getting close to it when these situations happen because I start leaning forward. Renju, Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras. But again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. I know Renju and Shoko. And I'm connected to Iris. But I have an alibi. I was unconscious at the time. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. Unless that it was made to look like it was live, but it really wasn't live at all. But that still doesn't make any sense. At least not from my standpoint. Okay, that was weird. It's like my entire computer froze for a little bit. Now, now that I think about it, Shoko too. I don't remember killing her. My memories from six years ago are missing, but I still have my memory of recent events.
I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, not that I'm going to say it was him. What if he got, you know, shocked and then, let's say, uh... No, that's just dumb. Never mind. Moving on. And if I start doubting myself now... Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. I thought it over, boss. Of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Then there's only one thing you can do. Investigate. Continue your investigation. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. You're right. Got it, boss. So we're heading back to the cold storage. Sorry again about the bag. It's just I, I felt... A crash happening, so I immediately grabbed some sugar. As some of you know, my sugar problem. Or, what is it called? Hypoglycemia. I stepped into the cold storage warehouse. The air conditioning wasn't running, but it was still cold. The temperature, the temperature hadn't raised much at all. Cold air sunk into my skin, but the center of my body was burning hot. Is this Ota's blood? <laughs> oh, it's not that guy. Any clues? Uh, no, nothing so far. Because he left over here, got stabbed, and then was taken over there. But what about... Oh, he must have been put in the bear suit here and then taken over there. That's why there's no blood on the way there. Any progress on the investigation? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Unlikely to be a clue. Well, here it's not. Let's check this lowly straggler of a cardboard box. There's a cardboard box on the floor. There's nothing in it. Great. Never mind. A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. Do we have to watch this again? Yeah, look at the height of the arm. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. The warehouse has Wi-Fi? Okiura Fishery Co. LTD is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. Someone doesn't like this family. Or their connections. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. 
It certainly is suspicious. Video camera and laptop used for the stream. Okay. Iris and Ota's blood. Right here. Iris and Ota were... I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived. About 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. Right. About that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. It doesn't look like he was, like, awake for that situation. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound, or...? I cannot determine that. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. Maybe Ota was trying to help Iris, jumping at the criminal. That led to a scuffle, and Ota ended up with a knife wound in his side. I still don't understand. When they tased me, they... He was, like, smirking, and she was just, like... Didn't think of anything of it. He lost all his power to fight back. He was forcibly put inside the costume, and then finally cut open by the ice-cutting machine. But why? Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? I don't... You know what? I didn't even consider that. Why? Unknown. Yeah, I'm aware they're not here anymore. Iris's estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream, filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. That's stu so stupid. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. What is with this left eye crap? And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. Date, we should get moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. That was it? That was my investigation of the area? That was it? We will not find anything of importance here. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. All right. I'm sorry, that just seems rather stupid in my opinion. I'm heading out. Let me know if you find anything. I'll let them know, then... I let them know, then left the warehouse. So stupid. There's something missing there. When I left the warehouse, I saw Pewter. What is he doing here? He walked up to me while I was trying to work it out. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Isn't that classified? Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little. Why didn't you say anything at Abyss? The boss was there. I couldn't speak openly in front of her. His fashion seems completely different than anyone else in this entire game. So, I decided to meet you here. Like one of those evil guys. Dun dun dun. All right. Let's hear it. Earlier, I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. 
Yeah. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Wait, what? Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. More than one? In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. Wait, what? He was the Cyclops killer? Or, as he put it, one of the Cyclops killers? They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. Okay. Now can I know what the other person's name was, please? Who is this murderous psychopath? He was born with a brain dysfunction. Yes, thank you. Now can you tell me who he is? Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. I get it. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that you are delaying telling me who it is, it's pissing me off. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. Okay, yeah, he liked murdering. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. Murder. Yay! Can we move on? What was it? <laughs> I was like, are you a stupid head? Murder. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. You know, honestly, reading this, I mean, I knew what this was, but it just made me realize some of my actions in the past, why I did them. He got pleasure from killing people? Not the murder or anything of the sorts. I'm talking about, like, the dopamine thing. <laughs> It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was 12 when he took his first life. What? That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. About Rohan. 18 years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. Why? Why would he do that? The reason why was simple. Uh, it's the gateway to the soul. He was fascinated by women's eyes. So, it couldn't be because one of the victims was a male who had their eyeball removed. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. He needed to have them, to make them his own. Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye. From then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belong to a deceased woman. But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. I mean, that is just so fucked up. However, he soon met his ideal partner, the aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. 
Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. Okay, that's still... Why won't you tell... Uh... Set already knew the identity of the Cyclops killer. No killers. And he's only told me one. Why did the Cyclops case get classified? That, I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. But you still, uh, summarize for me. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter, tell me this. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. But that means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. So, how do you know it was him? Fuchu Prison? Yes. What's his name? In prison, he doesn't have a name. What is his name? He is simply called Number 89. And before he was called Number 89, what was his name? Number 89. I know who killed Shogun Adami. So, now you know why I said that. So number 89 knows, but why can't I get the name of number 89? That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead, and the other is behind bars. Neither of them had the opportunity. Peter looks seriously grim. Wait. Where am I going? It's not giving me an exact place. Well then, let's start with one and or work our way down. Matsushita Diner, Monday. <clears throat> the place was silent. It was so quiet I, quiet I felt I could hear the dust floating. I stepped inside. I thought it was empty, but I saw a shadow in the corner of my eye. Alright. Her son. It was Mayumi. It was like watching a decaying old tree cling pathetically to the earth. I'm so sorry to interrupt. About Ota. Do you want to talk about it? This is your fault. My fault? What do you mean, my fault? I heard from the police. Because you didn't take care of Iris. Your son tased me. My boy Ota got involved. <sighs> I was working on protecting Iris. Iris contacted Ota. Ota tased me in the ass. I'm sad he's dead, but he's the cause of this currently. Date, I looked into the investigation report. Mayumi confirmed Ota's body early this morning. I see. I'm sorry. I want to be alone right now. Before I stab you with my kitchen knife. Did you not hear me? Sorry. I understand, but your son tased me. Not saying that's bad enough to be killed, but that's primarily the reason why he's dead right now. I said leave! 
<laughs> it's not fair that they died. And I'm not just I'm 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 not trying to blame Ota for their deaths. All I'm saying is that because of Ota, I couldn't protect them. Date, let's go. She is in no state to talk. Yeah, you're right. Mayumi is crying. No shit, Sherlock. I mean, I understand how she's upset at me and is blaming me. I'm not going to fault her for that. But, I mean, and I'm not about to tell her that, you know, your son tased me, which is why they, uh, you know, escaped my watch. That was me adjusting my monitor. I will always explain my sounds that happen in the background. I'm, I'm a fidgeter. Mizuki is curled up on the sofa. She looked like a small animal frightened by a predator. About Ota. About Iris. These are the conversations I'm getting from everyone, and I mean... I don't blame them. I really don't blame them. I'm doing my best not to, like, get emotional in the game. Hence why you may hear me slap my face after starting to stutter so that way I can continue forward. But... About the o Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. Dot, dot, dot. Mizuki must know. About Iris and Ota. Yeah. Of course. The news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. Why all these connections? I mean, that points everything... Not that she did it. I'm just saying that someone's trying to hurt her. I mean, who else is left? It is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. Can I be left alone for a while? Uh, you were, but yes, I understand. Are you okay? Yeah. She certainly didn't seem so. But I can't stay by her side forever. Aiba, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. I'm gonna need more than just a good counselor. Understood. I stayed with her for a little while, but we didn't speak. Having nothing more to say, I left. Let's go to the next victim. Next victim's family, friends, otherwise. So fucking stupid. I'm sorry. When playing Danganronpa, it was just ridiculous on the stuff. I mean, it was beyond, I don't even know how to put it. It was far more less serious than what this is. If that makes any sense. When I visited the Sangen household, I found Hitomi with a hollow look in her eyes. She let me in and asked me to sit on the sofa. I agreed and sat down. But after that, I couldn't say a single word. The heavy silence weighed on both of us. And so what do I do? I try to talk to her. About Iris. Iris was my everything. We always went everywhere together. Whether it was buying clothes or going to the movies or taking a walk or going shopping at the supermarket. When she was young, she would just hold one of my fingers. Her hand was too small to hold mine. Then it was two, then three, 
And finally she could hold my hand. This just isn't fair. For people, they have their children but taken from them. She left my hands altogether. <sighs> she started crossing her arms, being independent, even though she needed constant attention growing up. That's a kid for you. About Iris, again. Her memories are a part of this room. And always will be. When she was a baby, she fell off that sofa and cried and cried. One day, she tore up her picture book all over the floor here. <laughs> Another time, she drew with crayons all over the window. <laughs> she painted my portrait on Mother's Day. Scratches on the floor, chipped plates, bird marks on the table, stains on the cushions. <clears throat> Hold on. Everything you see, it all holds a memory of her. But why? Hitomi, my entire focus is on this case. Is there anything at all you can tell me? I don't know if this is important, but... No, please, tell me. I may have told you this already. I met Renju's wife Shoko twice before. The first time at the wedding. The second time a month ago. That second time was in the waiting room of the prison. Prison? I muted myself because I <laughs> started uh, turning up and not functioning. So I'm I'm back. I mean, I'm unmuted. But prison? Does she know about number 89? There's an acquaintance of mine from when we were younger. I visit them a few times a year. By coincidence, I saw Shoko. I don't think she noticed me, but... I recognized her as Renju's wife right away. She was there for the same reason I was. To visit one of the inmates. Do you know who? No, I don't. We didn't talk. Which prison? Fuchu Prison. In Tokyo. Fuchu. Prison? About Ota. Ota was one of my students. I taught him in elementary school. I heard it from the police. Ota tried to help Iris and ended up... I don't know what to say. I have no words. I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll be going now. I don't know what to do. Thinking about her. <laughs> Dante, please, you, you have to catch them. Please, please. I will. Trust me.
I, 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 um, mm. I'm calling the episode here. You know what to do. I will catch you guys in the next one.